America has enemies all over this world, and many of them look for anything they can take advantage of to get one up on the United States. So I thought we'd talk with Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano, who's an expert in national security and foreign policy challenges at Heritage. Uh, Colonel, it's good to have you back on the program. Hey, great to be with you. So tell me about this. What is your read on on whether or not the president's diagnosis with China virus last week might have given our uh, some of our opponents on this planet uh, a bit of, a, I guess, a leg up or an opportunity in? Well, I think it was a nothing burger with a side of nothing on the side. <laughs> look, first of all, look, first of all, take advantage of what? I mean, what exactly are they waiting for? Was Russia waiting to in, invade Estonia the day Trump got sick. I mean, the, the Russians have very little space. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're, they're, they've been very slow off the mark in Belarus because they really don't want to start anything. Uh, Iran is, is bankrupt. They're not going to start anything. Um, North Korea has been relatively quiet and shows every sign of being quiet through the election. Um, what are the Chinese going to do? I mean, and do you think the, the Chinese, how, how are they supposed to do this? They just wake up and say, oh, the president's in the hospital. Let's launch the fleet. <laughs> I mean, the people that say this stuff, and I saw tons of this reporting, like, oh, my God. It's like, where are you getting this from? Are you watching, you know, too much designated survivor? Because that's what it sounds like. Well, and it does sound like that. And, and even to the extent that the Chinese want to be able to advantage Joe Biden, because I think they know with Donald Trump, they have a tough opponent in office and he's seen it. I mean, he certainly showed a willingness to work with a, with China, uh, but he's also said we're not going to be pushovers, uh, whether it comes to business deals or, or the military side of things, whereas Joe Biden looks like he's already bought and paid for by Beijing. Well, look, I don't know what Joe Biden's going to do on China, but we know what the president's going to do. I mean, because we've seen him do it for four years, and it has been exactly the right thing. And people say, well, you know, China hasn't changed. Well, that's not the point. China's going to do what China's going to do, and they have a lot of cards to play. But what this president has done has demonstrated for four years that the United States is going to stand up for its interests, and it's not going to be bullied around. I think that's real progress. I think that's looking after the American people. I think that's exactly right. The other thing they say is, well, oh, my God, they can flood us with disinformation uh, during this Well, time they're of doing crisis. it, aren't well, they? Time of crisis. Well, it's only a time of crisis because all the yahoos are screaming from the rooftops. But, you know, my... How would we know? I mean, this isn't if the Russians or the Chinese are bombarding us with disinformation. This is not like the man screaming fire in a, in a, in a crowded movie theater. This is like the man screaming fire in the Super Bowl with 80,000 screaming fans. There. I mean, there's so much going on that I think anything the Russians or Chinese would want to do on a disinformation front is has a very, very difficult time breaking through. I think well, we are much better at disinforming ourselves. Well, but Colonel, let me throw one at you specifically that I think matches right up with this. Some point, at some point, probably in the next couple of months, we're going to see a vaccine approved. Now, it's going to take months beyond that before you know we, get, we see right. 300 million doses uh, that are produced and ready to be distributed. And it'll happen over a period of time. And I hope it goes first to the frontline first responders, doctors, nurses, paramedics, uh, police, fire, etc. But but when that happens, has, hasn't has Russia been involved in a lot of the pushing of the, the anti-vaxxer uh, uh, sentiment that, that apparently consumes about 30 percent of Americans who say, I don't want vaccines of any kind. And if they push that idea, one that's also, by the way, being pushed by Joe Biden, saying he wouldn't trust a vaccine that comes from Donald Trump, as though Donald Trump is down in the basement of the uh, White House with beakers and vials uh, coming up with the vaccine on his own. If Joe Biden were suddenly made president, God forbid, uh, it'll be the same scientists working on the vaccine as the ones working at the president's direction, both in private industry and in government labs. So for Joe Biden to say, you know, I don't trust a vaccine if it comes about under Donald Trump is is actually doing China's bidding. And is China capable of, of using those kind of already existing attitudes, the, the native attitudes of some people who say, I don't want vaccines. I don't want to be vaccinated. Well, first of all, I, I think it's inconscionable for anybody that, to play politics with any part of the COVID response. And so anything like that, I just think is just a disservice. Public health policy ought to be driven by public health and not about politics. And it's, and it's one of the great – if there has been you know, a chain on our feet as we try to deal with this, it is people who try to play politics out of this. 
and not essentially be partners working with the federal government and the administration in dealing with the virus. I mean, a lot of what we're seeing now is politics and not public health policy. I think the reality is, is um, it's, it's, it's the numbers you vaccinate and who you vaccinate and not if everybody gets vaccinated that, that breaks the back of a pandemic. Agreed. So first responders, they're going to take the vaccine. Um, older people who are at risk, they're going to take the vaccine. So now you've taken almost the, the entire people most likely to contract it and the most vulnerable people off the table. And many adults will take the vaccine. And, and since we know that younger people and children are not nearly as much as risk, um, that uh, when you get that first 100 million doses of vaccine out there, uh, even if, even, even if you know, we haven't hit the magic 40 percent mark, you know, that's going to that's going to make a dramatic difference. And, and, that, and that's what the president said. Uh, and, you know, but people say, well, you're arguing about the exact date, when, you know, if, oh, my God, it's going to take till August or whatever. Who cares? <laughs> the reality is, is once it's out there and critical people start to get it, we have another tool in the toolkit. And what the look, what the president's sickness has demonstrated more than anything else to people is if you are in a vulnerable age group or have vulnerabilities and you get covid and you get prompt medical treatment and the therapeutics that are available, not just the experiments, the stuff is available, your potential for survival rate skyrockets. Yep. We, this is not March. And, and shame on politicians who talk about shutting the country down again and as if nothing's been done since March. When we have armed the hospitals, we built up capability, we are in such better shape. And, and people still talk about this as, as if we're dealing with a disease that we knew nothing about four months ago, we didn't have an army of therapeutics, and didn't know much more about it. It's really shameful. It really is. It's not. It is. It's just, it's, it's bad. I think it's bad politics because I think Americans aren't going to stand for it either. They, know, they take it for what it is, and they, and they know what these people are trying to do, and I think they're angry about it. You know what's funny, Colonel, is I've spent the last four or five months trying to persuade people. They, they, they called and said, well, Lars, what difference does it make if we flatten the curve? And I said, you don't overwhelm the hospitals. And we've come close right. in a couple of places like San Antonio. Um, and, of course, we saw Italy where they started saying if you're over 70, you don't get a, an ICU bed. And they said, but what difference right. does it make if we're all eventually going to get it? I said, because in November or October, we're going to know more about this disease than we right. did in February. And, and, and as you say, the president's trip to the hospital where they're using monoclonal antibodies and remdesivir is there and it's ready and approved. And they've got other therapies that they know and they know that zinc plays a role and vitamin D plays a role. And all those things, if the doctors had known all those things in January and February and knew that they could use them, we might well have saved a lot of lives. But buying that extra time actually bought us some distance and, and some better knowledge. I, I think that's exactly right. And for people who say, you know, our response has been all screwed up, and they say, look at Europe, look at Europe, look at Europe. Europe yeah. is doing way worse than we are. They have exactly the same uh, demographics, exactly the same capability. And then you're either in countries like, you know, China, where we, we really know nothing about the reality of what they're doing, and also countries that, that the demographics are very different, like a Korea, where, let's be honest, Koreans don't, aren't nearly as overweight and don't have nearly as many diabetics as we do. Uh, and, and that explains a lot about why their population is a little bit more resilient. 